Last time on this channel, I shared the change in thinking that had helped me ditch the self-doubt that had been holding me back from fulfilling my potential. But to take us even further, today I'm talking to business psychologist Caroline McCoy, who travels the world working with the bosses of major international brands. She also coaches politicians to help them increase their impact and counts global giants like Nike and Shell among her list of clients. Key to everything she does is making people more self-aware of their strengths and the choices they have available. So I'm really excited to introduce you to Caroline as she shares with us some key ways to find our strength and confidence in order to be able to fulfill our potential. Caroline, thank you so much for sparing the time because I know how busy you've been recently. You've been in California and, and you're just constantly on international calls. So thank you. So I wanted to start by getting your thoughts on the scale of the problem that we're talking about today. Th this um, abundance of self-doubt and a lack of confidence because I even see in my work in journalism so many talented colleagues who are just being held back by a lack of confidence. And some have described it as um, imposter syndrome where they feel they're not good enough and it's gonna be exposed or that somehow people can see through them. And um, I mean, that's something I've very much experienced myself over the years. So I'm, I have to say, I hear this mainly from female friends and colleagues, but I'm guessing men are not immune from this. So. How common do you think this ish issue is? It's a really good question and a good thing for you to have noticed. And it is huge issue between both men and women. And as you describe it there, uh, Claire, it's really limiting for people. Um, and so I would say that it certainly is something that runs across both genders. I hear probably slightly more from women, but I think there are some reasons why that might be the case, mm -hmm. but by no means is it exclusive to women. And very early on um, in my training, I came across a psychometric that tapped into thought processes and uh, it divides thoughts into three categories. It's a brilliant, uh, brilliant model. Um, and so the three categories are uh, constructive thoughts, uh, passive defensive thoughts and aggressive defensive thoughts. And at the end of the training, um, you get to see some research in terms of uh, what how people fall. And it's staggering that 95% of people fall into categories where they have a lot of either passive uh, defensive thoughts or aggressive defensive thoughts. And I remember as a young psychologist thinking, surely that can't be right. You know, fast forward 25 years later, and I think <clears throat> that may be an optimistic estimation. Uh, so it's certainly somewhere between uh, 95 and probably 97 percent of people who have a lot of self-doubt. Um, and uh, yes, as you describe it, some of that manifests in uh, imposter syndrome. So defensive thoughts um, versus constructive thoughts. It's, inter it's an interesting term. What, what does a defensive thought sort of sound like? Well, it depends on whether it falls into the passive category, where there's uh, lots of uh, self-doubt that is manifested perhaps around avoidance, for example. I'll just avoid that situation and keep myself safe. Mm -hmm. uh, it might be manifested around having lots of thoughts around the need to please other people and spend a lot of time focusing on others and what the you think is right for others, and that keeps ourselves uh, secure. Um, those are just two examples of the passive. There are more, and the aggressive ones are things like you'll have come across people like this who uh, they're often the impact, but it's not their intention, of course, but their impact is often to be seen like a cold shower. So you're having a discussion and they will use their intellect as a defense mechanism. So they'll always seem to have a reason and an intellectual argument around why something wouldn't work. Mm. And so it, that that is a way for them to uh, keep themselves safe 
by uh, defending themselves through intellect, for example, or the need. Uh, another one that's very felt in our organizations is power. So having power over someone else. And another one that falls into the aggressive stance is the need for status. So a prop up of self-esteem around having a title or a big office or a fancy car. So, I mean, that suggests, and I, it's something that I think I've noticed over the years, uh, working with people who are very bullish and, yeah. you know, uh, uh, figures of power, that doesn't necessarily mean they don't have self-doubt. It's just how they are covering up. Indeed. Look, it's like um, when you see someone who is arrogant, mm -hmm. people think, oh, they're overconfident and they don't mm -hmm. have anything. Out. But of course, that's not true. When you're in a state where you're feeling confident and you don't have doubts, uh, you don't have any need to be arrogant, of course, because arrogance removes us, puts us a level above people. And what we always want to do is put ourselves on an equal level. So when people use aggressive defensive thoughts and actions, they put themselves up. That's a lonely place. Or if they use passive ones, they put themselves down. And that too is not, is not good. People often think confidence is fixed. You're either confident or you're not confident. Uh, but it's, of course, it's not. It's fluid. There'll be times when we feel really confident, things are going well in the world, uh, work and home. And then there's times that we'll feel wobbled. The first thing really to recognize is everyone feels it at some stage. Yeah. It's a normal human feeling. And there's something huge in accepting that. Yeah. And people, because they often don't share it, ironically, it's more men that tend not to share it mm -hmm. uh, because of how they're brought up. Women tend to find that a bit more easy to discuss with friends. Um, because they, they tend to have that stronger uh, social uh, access to social networks. Um, and so they, they they can be not as alone. But if I run a group session and people start disclosing, everyone always says it's so good to know that it's not just me. And I think that's one of the key messages that I would say is, you know, please, anyone listening, rem remember that it is indeed everyone at some stage in life. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's the thing that has helped me so much along the way is realising that pretty much everybody else feels the same. There's nothing wrong with you for feeling that it's, that lack of confidence because we, you know, we're all affected by it from time to time. The key issue becomes then, what do you do when you yes. find yourself in that situation? Where do you begin? <laughs> Starting by acknowledging it's normal. And an, an analogy that I uh, often use with people, which is really helpful, is to imagine that you're the head of a board table. Imagine sitting in a, in a boardroom situation or just at a, at a you're, you're chair in a meeting and you are the director of that meeting mm -hmm. and you've got all of these different people at your meeting. And so too is our inner world. We have lots of different parts to us. I like to say they're like inner advisors. Um, we, we don't have any say what inner advisors exist within us, but we have every say over what we do with them. In my understanding about how people work is that all parts of us are trying to do is good. They don't, some of them don't look like they're trying to do is good, but they all are. So uh, it's it's really helpful to start to cultivate positive relationships with the different parts of us. So we're talking here about doubt, self-doubt, or perhaps more specifically, as you've mentioned, imposter syndrome. I think one of the things to remember is that that's only a part of us. There are many other parts. But what we tend to do is we let the loudest parts of us jump into the director's seat and mm -hmm. dominate. And just as you were at if you were at a meeting and you had somebody that was very loud at that meeting and they dominated, then you, the, the group uh, will not or the team will not make the best decision because they're only listening to one person. Likewise, uh, when something like the imposter syndrome emerges for us, it's really important not to let it jump in and be the director, but to find a way of engaging with it uh, to uh, to acknowledge it and to not let it dominate. So it's a really helpful mindset to have when you notice it, to say, this isn't all of me, it's just a part. Mm -hmm. um, and that's hugely important because if you imagine, uh, if you're at a meeting 
and one person we've all been there you've got somebody lied and you feel you come out and you felt oh, I had so many good things I wanted to say and I didn't get a chance well if you imagine your inner world is is like that too so all the other parts they get a bit annoyed out of awareness they get a bit annoyed mm -hmm. so that exacerbates our self-confidence because we're not listening to the parts for example imposter syndrome I'm going to be found out that I'm not good enough then you've got all the things that you know are good about you you may know that you're successful in many areas of your life you might be an amazing friend a wonderful parent have a fantastic strategic thinking or the opposite be really good at detail but we've all got really good things and to not pay attention to those they get a bit annoyed with us mm -hmm. um and then inwardly we begin to give ourselves a hard time which as i said exacerbates because only the loud one is getting uh, a, a place we hold all our emotions in our body where when you feel you start to notice the self-doubt creeping in where does it sit in your body mm -hmm. and breathe into it and find a way to meditation is often a great way to do this but just find a way to let it go through the emotion and but not let it dominate to just say what's this about for me feel the emotion not let it overwhelm me and then to find a replacement for that which is when did I feel great about me and where does that sit in my body and then to really focus in on that so the first thing is really acknowledging that it's human and that you can't get through life or it's impossible to not have these feelings then the second thing to do is realize this is just a part of me it's not all of me yeah and then to say to, to welcome the part of you because it will be trying to do you good it might be that it's trying to remind you to stay humble in the world to stay balanced in the world so you know asking questions of what are you trying to do for me that's good mm -hmm. and then you welcome it so when you feel it you go ah right this is trying to remind me to keep humble therefore you start to cultivate a different relationship with it uh, so that you welcome it rather than going, oh, no, here it comes again. And oh, it's the loud one and it's going to dominate me. And I'm going to forget about all the other parts and they're going to get cross. And then that's going to uh, knock my confidence and my self-esteem even more. Because, I mean, we just see it as a negative thing. But actually, if we tap into it, maybe it's trying to tell us something constructive. And if we can balance that with the thinking, the remembering what we're good at and why we're there in the first place, maybe we can have a more balanced conversation with ourselves. And I want to say a bit more about this because I was at a meeting this week um, <clears throat> with a large group and uh, and this this feature came, came up um, and it comes up in every organization with every person I work with. It's a fascinating thing about our culture mm -hmm. is that we are so good at focusing on our negatives. Yeah. And we are so poor at focusing on the things that we're good at. And I see this time and time again, and it's so limiting. It's like baking a cake. You've got two sets of ingredients if you want to maximize your potential in the world. You've got the ingredients that are, what do I need? To, what do I want to focus on for my areas of growth and self-development? And then an equal measure, what am I really good at? And the importance of focusing on those in equal measure is so missed in the world there's all sorts of beliefs around oh i'll be big-headed i'll be conceited yes. it's not the right thing to do and it's so limiting so of course yeah. then whenever something like self-doubt comes out and part of that method is to look at well, all the things that i'm good at we are so we're not skilled at that we're uncomfortable with it and so to really focus on hang on a moment how do i uh rectify that for myself this is something that our society uh encourages us to do but it's not good for us so mm. what do i do about that for me um and that is a massive thing to help around this whole notion of, of self-doubt um, and the imposter syndrome no absolutely i recognize that in myself i realized that for years i was focusing on my weaknesses and the strengths that i was seeing in other people that i felt i didn't have and when you can turn that around and say oh hang on a minute here are my strengths that are unique to me and we all have weaknesses. I'm going to focus more on my strengths. Start from your strengths. Start by owning those things. It is our light and not our dark.
darkness that frightens us. Mm. You're a child of the world, playing small, or you're a child of the universe, playing small doesn't serve the world. We will play small if we don't look at our, our strengths. Yeah. And take nourishment from them. Uh, so that they support us when we're going through, particularly when we're going through uh, self-doubt and um, those things creep in or we're challenged. Is this a conversation? I mean, should we presumably be focusing on this every day, having those conversations with ourselves, noticing what's happening in the moment and trying to think kinder thoughts? Absolutely. So we are aiming to often say to people I work with, what you're aiming to do is learn to zoom above yourself and look down totally non-judgmentally oh right I notice I find that challenging oh I notice I find that how do I support myself oh I notice I'm really good at that oh, that's so good um and to constantly uh do that for ourselves because when we do that we become more choiceful and we always want to stay in that director's seat so what tends to happen is so much uh, of our behavior uh, comes from our subconscious so that serves as well in the world to chuck a lot of things into our subconscious um, because then we can get on and do more things. But what tends to happen is we put too much in there. So a situation arises and we respond. Um, and there's we don't give any pause to many things. We have far more. We've got choice over everything. Mm -hmm. Not what happens to us, but we've got choice over what we do with it. To learn to become more aware means that we become more choiceful means that we can say okay rather than the subconscious responding per, by the way the subconscious responds much quicker when we are challenged so when our self-confidence is challenged then the old biological program or fight or flight kicks in so yeah. the lower part of the brain is activated and what we need to learn to do is to say what do i do in those situations how do i become more aware so that i build a gap between situation arising and my response to it and then in that go what are my options here how do I support myself how do I do and the you know on a daily basis to be able to do that we become more self-aware we become more choiceful we become more grounded in the world um yeah it's all good love it Caroline I could spend all day talking about this thank you so much I hope you found that conversation with Caroline as helpful as I did. If you want to find out more about her work, I'll share a link to her website in the video description. And if you want to watch more inspirational videos on this channel, as well as product reviews and an array of expert interviews, then don't forget to subscribe and to hit the notification bell. For now, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.